Good afternoon, and welcome to the New Mexico History Museum and the exhibits Fractured Faiths, Spanish Judaism, the Inquisition, and New World Identities, an exhibit that explores the journey of Sephardic Jews to the New World. The interior of the exhibition is modeled on the Ibn Shushan Synagogue in Toledo, Spain, the oldest standing synagogue in Europe, and a beautiful example of early synagogue architecture. The Forest of Columns reminds us of the importance of religious life in Spanish Spain, and the first object that we encounter immediately at the entrance is an old Torah scroll darkened from age, but the letter still completely clear. And nearby is a tefillin showing the wrapping that would have been used. And around a corner is a fragment from El Transito Synagogue. Starting with family life in Jewish Spain, this ketubah, or agreement for marriage, is from Tudela in northern Spain in the 1300s and it guarantees the woman's rights in marriage. These plates come from Teruel in eastern Spain, and we can see a range of serving bowls, um, Hanukkiya, uh, the washing cup, hand washing cup, and beautiful majolica ware that would have been on a fine table. Jews were also active in the sciences, from medicine to navigation. The astrolabe, designed by Abraham Sakuto, made it possible to sail in the open ocean, permitting Vasco de Gama and, and Christopher Columbus to do the voyages. Jews lived in Spain for well over a thousand years. In the early 700s, Muslim forces arrived and took control of the peninsula. Over the next several hundred years, Jews lived well most of the time under Muslim rulers. They were active in government, became prime ministers in many cases. About 1100 and the 1200s, the Christians began reconquering the peninsula. And under Christians, anti-Semitism grew dramatically. Pogroms began, and by 1391, there were terrible pogroms in which tens of thousands of Jews were killed. Other Thousands converted to Christianity to save their lives, and many more fled the country. This created a situation in which there were large numbers of crypto-Jews, people who had converted under pressure to save their lives, but who still thought of themselves as Jews and continued to practice Judaism in hiding. In January of 1492, the last Muslim kingdom in Spain had already surrendered to the Christian forces. In March, Ferdinand and Isabella decided to issue the Edict of Expulsion, driving all Jews out of Spain so that it would be only a Catholic country. The Inquisition was set up to find and identify crypto-Jews and other people who were not loyal to the Catholic Church. When a person was arrested by the Inquisition, they were called before a judge, and they were dressed in a special Inquisition garb with a cape and a pointed hat. Their sentencing was done in large public gatherings like this one. We see the six people who are being sentenced for Judaizing or other crimes in the front. The Inquisitors sit giving the judgment and passing the sentence on them. The Inquisition kept detailed records, like this one about Luis de Carvajal, or this one about Doña Teresa de Aguilera y Roche. The Inquisition also kept detailed records about their trials and the number of people executed, as in this book from Saragossa. To prove their loyalty to Christianity, families prepared elaborate genealogical books showing they had no Jewish or Muslim ancestry called Limpieza de Sangre. As conversos and crypto-Jews were fleeing Spain and the Inquisition in the 1500s, some of them chose to come to the Americas. And 
Mexico was a favorite place for people to come. And for the first few decades, they lived well here without major challenges. By the late 1500s, the Inquisition was established in Mexico and began arresting people for Judaizing. As people saw that happening, some of them chose to migrate to the outer edges of the control of the Spanish world, and that meant coming to New Mexico. Over the next few hundred years, uh, that story goes silent. We don't hear much about them. In the 1950s and 60s, a movement began in New Mexico of identifying Jewish roots. And as that movement grew, more and more people came forward telling of stories of lighting candles on Friday night, even though they were doing it as Christians, not as Jews. But the story was there. And many people discovering this heritage of their families have decided to return to Judaism. From a man wearing a prayer shawl and holding an image of the Virgin to a cross that contains a Hanukkiah and a Magen David, we have these feelings being explored. Isabel Medina Sandoval, a Converso writer, expresses this very well when she says, on the fringe I wander, boundary of periphery, wondering just where I belong. In honor of Spanish Jews forced to convert, Rabbi Stephen Leon sings Ashiveno with a Latino melody. <laughs> Thank you to the New Mexico History Museum for allowing this documentation of the Fractured Faiths exhibition.